Welcome to part 83, my video season is Wonder 2.7. In this tutorial, we'll be continuing on from the last video in which we modeled a pumpkin, and in this video, we're going to take that pumpkin and carve it into a jack-o'-lantern. So if you have not seen part 82 in this video series, in which I modeled that pumpkin, I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now. But in this video, you can actually go ahead and download that pumpkin that I created in part 82, if you didn't want to follow along with that entire video. And you can start off with me with a pumpkin that's on the screen right now, in fact, with this Blender file. And we'll start modeling a pumpkin in just one moment. Of course, if you like this video or if you learned something in this video, go ahead and click on that like button below this video on YouTube. And if you want to see more videos like this one in Butter and in Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. Of course, just a note that I recorded part 82 and part 83 of this video series in one take, and then I decided to split it into two videos for the sake of the length of these videos. So you'll note that I'll just jump right in here and I'll finish off the video, and you might hear me refer to earlier in the video when I actually mean in part 82. Just a note here that if you want to follow along with this video, you will need Blender 2.79 or newer. There's a new feature in this version of Blender called denoising, which we'll be using later in this video so we can get a really high quality render, especially in a scene like this where there is a lot of darkness with one singular light that's emitting most of the light in the scene. You will want to clean up noise, and so this denoiser that's in this new version of Blender uh, will really, really help you out. Let's go ahead and jump back in when I start carving the pumpkin. If I go to my front view, this is approximately the view uh, that my camera sees. In fact, I could actually carve through my uh, uh, camera, but let's not bother. I'm going to select my camera and tap H on my keyboard to hide it. And we're going to carve our pumpkin using the knife tool. If you're not sure what the knife tool is, I have a video on that in this video series. It's an early video. Go ahead and check that out. I'll put a link to that on the screen right now. Um, using the knife tool, we can create our own edges. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. And to access the knife tool, I'm going to press K on my keyboard. When you press K, your mouse cursor will change to a little knife. And you'll get this green square attached to the end of your mouse cursor. I can start clicking and creating and cutting new edges. So I'm going to go start up here. I'm going to create just simple triangle eyes. So I'll click there and there and there, and I'll connect up uh, to my first point right there. You'll see your uh, square turn to an outline square. So when you click, you'll know it's a finished cut. Now I could press enter, but I'm going to press E instead. E will make a new cut uh, while still in the knife uh, tool mode. So now I can click over here. We'll create a second eye. And I like that. It's a little bit smaller and more crooked. Let's go ahead and press enter, uh, but that's okay. I'm going to start creating the mouth. So I'll tap K again to get back into the knife tool. I'll start up here. I'll click and I'm going to do this very quickly. And I'll go ahead and press enter. So now I've got my two eyes and my uh, mouth, but I'm going to add some teeth. So I will press K one more time. I'll start clicking. I'll do this very fast. All right, so we have our two eyes and our mouth with teeth. I want to select all the faces that I don't want or I want cut out and delete them. So I'll press C on my keyboard to get that circle select back and I'll scroll up or down depending on your computer uh, so we get a smaller brush. And now if I left click and drag, I can make a selection. And of course, if you go outside the lines, you can press your mouse wheel down like a button or middle click and that will take away from your selection. So left click selects middle click and drag, uh, deselect. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, and I'll click to select this entire eye. I'll keep going. I'll select this eye as well and I'll select the mouth, making sure I don't get the three teeth that I selected and cut out uh, selected. If I make a mistake, well, I can just middle click to deselect and let's do this very quickly. All right, so we have all three pieces selected. I'm going to go ahead and press enter because I'm still in circle select mode. Uh, and now that I'm out of it, let's go ahead and press uh, delete or X on my keyboard and we'll delete faces because we selected faces. So X and delete faces. And as you can see now, I have my face cut out. Uh, isn't it uh, special? Hopefully you do a better version than me. And I would love to see your final results on my Facebook page. I'll talk about that at the end of the video uh, if you decide to follow along with this video. So we have a jack-o'-lantern or a pumpkin with a face cut out of it. The problem here though is that there is no thickness. There is no uh, 
inner lip or wall inside of the pumpkin and there's no inside so we need to fix that. The way we can easily add an inside and thickness to our pumpkin is using a modifier called the solidify modifier. So I'll go back into object mode and I'll go back to my wrench modifier tab and we're going to add a third modifier but I'm going to collapse these ones just so we can see them just in one line. I'm going to add a third modifier to our modifier stack and that's going to be called um, solidify. It's under generate solidify and as you can see once we add that we have an inside to our pumpkin but more importantly we have thickness and we can change the amount of thickness right in the options so we're gonna just click and drag that up and as you can see we get a thicker wall uh, going inwards into the middle of our pumpkin of course there are lots of options here we can change the offset to make the pumpkin um, become bigger actually or if you turn it down to negative one it'll stay the same size and go inwards um, but we have some problems here and the problems are to do with our cuts we now have very messy geometry we made some cuts with our knife tool but as you can see you know when we go and use the solidify modifier things start going awry and that's because we have uh, n-gons we have faces uh, with more than four uh, sides or edges and especially where we see a vertices or edges very close to one another or whenever we see let's say a part cut out this is a polygon but has a part cut out of it so we have like an inset or a chunk taken out of a polygon it won't work well so we have to do some modifying here before we do that though I'm actually gonna press tab to go back into uh, object mode I'm gonna add one more modifier and that's called the edge split modifier so I'm gonna add modifier in object mode to the pumpkin add modifier it's going to be called edge split it's under generate it's right there and what that will do is it'll sort of look for all the hard edges um, in my pumpkin which should be just basically where I've cut out and it'll make those uh, kind of artificially broken apart so they look like a, a stronger edge we're actually going to turn off edge angle though so I'll uncheck that and if I go back into edit mode, what I want to do here is I want to make my uh, edges or the, the edges that run around the outside of my facial features, I want them to be marked as creases. So I'm going to hold alt, right click and hold shift and alt now and right click and go around the edge with alt and shift held down of all the um, facial features so I can select them all and I'll just speed this part of the video up. Okay, so I think I have all the edges selected. Uh, if not, I can always go back and, and make corrections. But with them all selected, I'm going to press Control uh, e on my keyboard. Control e will bring up the edges menu and I'm going to select mark sharp. Mark sharp is what that edge split modifier over there will recognize, sharp edges. So again, Control e and mark sharp and they should get marked with sort of a aqua colored uh, edge, especially if I press A to deselect, you can see. And did I miss any? I don't think so. I think I'm pretty good. So now if I press tab to go back into uh, object mode, uh, that will actually help a little bit with these uh, flaws. But what I need to do now is go around and fix problem area. So I'm gonna press tab to go back into edit mode. My problem areas will be wherever there is an inset or chunk taken out of a polygon uh, where, you know, it goes inwards, but there's no edges coming off of the, the inward part. There will also be problems wherever I have triangles that butt up against uh, the edge where my face is cut out. So that's a triangle right there. I want to fix that. Or wherever I have uh, edges that are very close to one another, or wherever vertices are very close to one another, or wherever I have uh, vertices that are sort of just on their own, that aren't really doing anything, those will be a problem as well. So I'm going to do the first few of these corrections, but I'm going to go around, and this will take a little bit of time uh, around all the eyes and mouth uh, and teeth uh, to fix these problems. So how I fix a problem like this is I press K on my keyboard to bring up the knife tool in edit mode. I'm going to click right on the end of or tip of that eye and then I'm going to go up and be connected up to the middle of that edge or up to the corner here just so I have an edge coming off of there. So now we're making two polygons out of where we had one that had a chunk taken out of it and I can press enter on my keyboard. Same thing down here. I'll press K. I'm going to connect that up 
And same thing down here, but I'll tap E to start making a new cut, and I'll click and click and I'll press enter. Now I have a triangle right here and I'm gonna get rid of it actually by selecting this edge right there. And if I press X on my keyboard, I can dissolve that edge. So I'm gonna select dissolve edge. And what that will do is it will take that triangle and merge it with this uh, quad, this four sided polygon. So now we don't have any triangles left. I have two edges very close together, so I'm gonna take this one. In fact, uh, yeah, I'll just take that one and I'll tap G twice, GG, and I'm just gonna move it over a little bit so that you know it's not uh, quite so close to this one. Let's keep going around. I've got two, one, two edges very close together, so I'm gonna select that one, tap G twice and move it over, and same thing with that one. And you know what, that one is looking pretty good. The one other thing that you will find is that if you have you know a very jeggy, uh, edge around your uh, eye or mouth or facial feature. In other words, it'll go in and out. That won't help because your, your solidify modifier is trying to put a, uh, another edge perpendicular to your edge. But as you can see, because this face is kind of at a funny angle, it's making the angle of that section of the lip um, go at a funny angle. So I'm gonna try moving around the surface here. I'll take those two vertices. Uh, in fact, I'll be take that whole face and I'm gonna go to my top view and kind of move that so it's more uh, in line and hopefully that'll help solve that error. Maybe I'll take this one and just move it uh, up a little bit and over a little bit uh, just so that things look a little bit more even. So now if I go back into object mode, you can see we don't have the same kind of errors that we have over here. So I'm gonna speed up this part of the video. Uh, it'll be really quick. I'm gonna go around and solve those same sorts of issues and I'll be back in just a sec. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I wanna point out that you should keep uh, your four modifiers, your subsurf, displace, solidify, and edge split in this order, I believe. Uh, let's go ahead and try moving them around a little bit. If I move my subsurf to after or uh, below my displace modifier, you'll see uh, that you might get a little bit of change. In this case, we totally lost the bumpiness, so I'll go ahead and move Subsurf up to the top, which means it's applied first. Can we go ahead and add Edge Split before Solidify? Uh, that, I'm not sure, no. We get a, a worse result. Uh, you'll see that these become much more uh, jaggy, or the lip becomes much more jaggy uh, if we have Edge Split in, in front of or before uh, solidify. So keep them in that order and let's go back to uh, material view so we can see how things are doing here. As you can see though we have our pumpkin and it's looking good but the inside material should be different. It's a lighter material, it's not as glossy. So how can we do that? Our inside is virtual. This lip is only there and the inside surfaces are only there because of the solidify modifier. But in the solidify modifier we're actually able to uh, specify an offset for the material so we can specify a different material for the inside faces as well as the rim faces. Now on this object though we only have one material it's called material.001 I'm gonna call this uh, pumpkin orange and let's go ahead and make a new material slot so I can make this area a little bit bigger with the, the uh, pumpkin selected. I'll press this little plus that adds a new material slot to this object. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new material into that slot. I'm gonna call this one uh, pumpkin gut and I'll press enter. Our node editor is still squashed at the bottom, so I'll make it a bit bigger. And as you can see, our pumpkin guts material is selected and it's only a white diffuse material. That's not what I want. I'll select diffuse and I'll get rid of it. I'll press shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a subsurface scattering uh, material. We want this material to be very porous, so light easily bounces around in it and lights it up. So I'll go ahead and connect uh, that up to surface. 
and it's white. We'll leave it like that for a sec because back over here under our wrench tab for the modifiers, if I had the pumpkin selected, I can now change where we have the zero and, and computer start counting at zero always. So this is material zero. This is material one in this list, uh, top down from zero onwards. So under the wrench tab, we're going to set the material to one for the inside and as you can see the inside walls got that white uh, subsurf scattering material and the rim should need that as well so zero to one and now our rim has that as well and now we can change the color to the inside of the pumpkin uh, guts color and that's going to be a lighter sort of a, a, a skinny orangey color uh, but in this case we're going to change the scale of the subsurfing up remember that zero uh, or a very, a very low number like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 is going to make the object look very hard and not much light is going to bounce around in it. But in this case, we're going to turn it up to maybe 2 and I'll press enter. And so now if we go back into rendered view, our pumpkin has taken shape, but it's missing a um, candle inside. So I'm going to go back. In fact, I'll leave that the way it is, but I'll split this top window into two like we had before, I believe. So I'm gonna grab this little triangle area, left click and drag it to the left, and we'll press T and N over here so we can see the pumpkin. I'll press zero to go through my camera view. I need to add a candle to the inside of the pumpkin. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Shift A on my keyboard. I'm gonna add a new cylinder. It's way too big right now. So I'll tap S, I'll go to my top view, We'll make it about the right uh, diameter as a little tea candle, so it'll be like that. I'll go to my front view, maybe my side view, and I'll tap S and then Z on my keyboard to make it smaller. In fact, I'll make it smaller than that. I'll tap Z to go into wireframe view, and we have a very dense mesh, and we're looking at our, at our mesh. Um, I'm going to turn off subsurf uh, in this window so I can see my tea candle inside we're going to put it right about there let's go to the top view and make sure uh our front view make sure it's lined up nicely i'm going to press shift s on my keyboard to bring up the snap menu i'm going to select cursor to selected my 3d cursor will go right there i'm going to press shift uh, a on my keyboard we're going to add a new mesh it's going to be a uv sphere and this uv sphere is going to be our flame so i'm going to tap s on my keyboard to make it really small and i'll zoom in make it even smaller I'll move it up and I'm going to use proportional editing again to take the top vertice of this uh, UV sphere. So I'll tap uh, tab on my keyboard to go into edit mode. I'll select just the top vertice. I'll go to my uh, front view again. I'll turn on proportional editing uh, or to connect it, I think. And now if I tap G to grab, I can grab it. And I'll, and I'll pull it up, but I'm actually going to press escape because I want to change the fall off uh, shape to, uh, by default, it's set to smooth. I want sharp. So I've got it set to sharp, G. And as you can see now, if I, if I pull it up, it'll become a flame shape, but I'm actually going to do a little something fancy here. I'm going to rotate it. So I'll tap R, uh, so it's like that. And I'll keep going. I'm going to push that down a little bit. Uh, and you can scroll while you're moving a little bit. And I'm gonna tap G again. I'm gonna make that smaller, move it up there, and I'll tap R. So it just looks like kind of a, a bent flame. Sometimes it turns out better than other times. Uh, there we go, and I'll press tab to go back into object mode. I'll turn off uh, partial editing though. There we go. Let's go ahead and add a material to that. It's going to be an emission material. So under the material tab, I'll click new and it's not going to be a diffuse material. It's going to be an emission material. So now it's a little light, but it's way too dull. So I'll turn it up from one to let's say 500 and I'll press enter. So now it looks like a bright light. And if I turn up even more, let's say 700 or even a thousand, it will actually emit light to the inside of the pumpkin. Let's go ahead and see how we're doing. I'm going to do a quick test render, but I'm going to do a, a control S and click to save. And if I do a render and I'm using my GPU, so this will go quickly and I'll speed up in the video, we're going to see some results that maybe we don't want. So I'll go ahead and click render. 
And as you can see, we have a pretty good looking scene, but we have artifacts. We have these little dots. They're commonly called fireflies in Blender. And this is because of the way that the Cycles Render Engine renders a scene. You get these artifacts. And the way we can get rid of them is there's a few ways. I actually have a video on how to get rid of fireflies in the Cycles Render Engine. I'll put a link to that video on the screen right now. But quickly, let's go ahead and press Escape. I'm going to go, and I believe it's under my... Uh, render tab yes it is it's down here it's called sampling and i'm gonna leave my samples uh, or the render samples at 50 which is quite low but i'm gonna clamp the indirect lighting so i'm gonna change this clamp indirect to 0 0.5 i'm gonna press enter and i go back up and try rendering out again and see what our results look like and so they're looking pretty good. I have uh, much less, if not no noise, except around uh, where it's a bright next to a dark section in my render. I might change my render samples up from 50 to 100. Uh, let's go and see what that looks like. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. Where a scene like this struggles, though, in the Cycles render engine is really making it look smooth. And you can turn up these samples uh, all you like, and you might get this one that you want. But Blender 2.79, I'll go back to the splash screen so you can see it, this version has a new feature called denoising. And we're going to touch upon that just very quickly here. Uh, I believe it's under the, this is called the Render Layers tab. There's a new section with a checkbox called denoising. And if I check that and re-render, it's going to smooth out my render a whole lot, which is really a saving grace if you're rendering with a CPU and you have a slower computer. Rendering takes a long time. With this option, you can now render out with many fewer samples. Again, samples are under the sampling section right there render samples you might render as low as 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 samples but if you use under the render layers tab uh, denoising you might get much smoother nicer results i'm going to change these settings a little bit though uh, if i hover over these it says uh, the feature strength controls removal of noisy image feature passes lower values preserve more detail but aren't as smooth i'm going to turn these down to 0 0.15 same thing with strength 0 0.15 and my radius i'm going to turn this down a little bit to uh, four and i'll press enter in fact i'm going to use uh, three and i'll press enter you can play around with these uh, all you like but let's go ahead and see what this looks like i'll go back up to the camera tab and press render and as you can see, we have a pretty darn looking scene with a fairly realistic looking jack-o'-lantern. I hope you learned something in this video. If you like this video, please go ahead and click on that like button below. If you want to see more videos like this one in Blender and Tech, click on that subscribe button as well. If you did follow along with this video, go ahead and save out your image. Go to image and save image right there. Save it to your computer and upload it to the comment section on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash borncg. I would love to see the jack-o'-lanterns that you you may following this tutorial up on my Facebook page. I love to see your work. Actually, you know what? I've just realized that I've forgotten something. I forgot to give our jack-o'-lantern a lid and I need to change the color of the flame light. Right now, it's a white light. So let's go ahead and fix that first. And let's go ahead after that and add a quick lid or rim because of course, when you're carving a jack-o'-lantern, you need to cut a hole in the top so you can empty it out. Let's go ahead and press escape on our keyboards and I'm gonna go and press one to go to my front view. Um, in order to make the lid, actually, we'll do the flame first. I'm going to select my flame object. It is. And I'm going to change the emission color. This is very simple. Uh, candlelight is not pure white. It's a little bit uh, orangey. So I'm going to turn it down or turn it to basically a yellowy orange color and just a little tiny bit. But that will affect our final render. You'll see a difference if you really look for it. Uh, and that's that. Let's go ahead very quickly and add a uh, opening for our our pumpkin on the top of them. So let's go ahead and select the pumpkin object. I'll press tab to go into edit mode. Basically, I can just use one of these edge loops. So I can go into edge select mode. I can, you know, press A to deselect all. I can hold alt on my keyboard and right click on one of these edges wherever I think um, the hole would be. I'm going to select this one actually. So I'll hold alt and right click on that. And it has, you know, the little indents for the ridges that go around. What I might do is I might press uh, the space bar on my keyboard and I might type in smooth, S-M-O-O-T-H. 
and there is an object, I don't know actually, or an option, I don't know how to actually find this in Blender, it's called Smooth Vertex, I guess it might be in Control uh, V, is it here? Uh, smooth, yes, so Control V and Smooth Vertex, and there it is, and you can change the amount of smoothing over in your tool shelf, so I can press T, and I saw it over here as well, and I can change the amount of smoothing, but basically it'll smooth out whatever you have selected in terms of the spacing and, and kind of evenness of your vertices. So I'm just gonna leave it at 0 0.5. So now we have a more perfect circle. And I'm gonna take that edge loop and I'll press Control B to bevel it apart. So as you can see, when I bevel it and move my mouse, I get a gap, that one edge loop becomes two edge loops. And I'm gonna make just a small gap there. I'm gonna actually delete those faces. So I'll go into face select mode. I'll press X on my keyboard. We'll delete, uh, not vertices, but faces. So now I have a hole and I could just kind of leave it at that if I wanted to, but let's go ahead and I'm gonna press uh, L on my keyboard when I'm hovering over one of these faces. So I'll put my mouse over one of these faces, let's say that one, and I'll press L. Uh, L stands for linked, so it'll select all the linked faces to that, to that section that your mouse was over, and because there's a gap, it'll only select out to that kind of island of faces. So now I'm gonna separate this as a new object. So I'll press P on my keyboard and in edit mode P brings up the separate menu. I'll just use selection. And so now that's actually a separate whole object. I can press tab to go back into object mode. Uh, that lid object, if I select it, if I go into wireframe mode, you can see what the selection is. The origin, so the rotation point is now in the wrong spot. So I'm going to on my tool shelf in object mode, set origin to geometry. You might see that your uh, D4 modifier will change a little bit, but it should not be too bad. This object still has all the same modifiers on it. If I go back into rendered mode, you'll see what the result is. And I'm gonna grab both the lid object and the stem and I might even parent the lid to the stem. I could press control P, set parent to object. So now I can just grab the stem and I can move it up and I can rotate it. So actually that stem has the uh, wrong pivot point as well. Set origin uh, to geometry. And so now I can rotate that and kind of put it off kilter and sticking up a little bit. And so I have a lid for my pumpkin. Let's go ahead uh, back through the camera view and I'll do a quick uh, control S to save and I'll click on render and we'll get where our final result. And that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye-bye.